I even like the Kobeni theory. Like, I'm open to rejecting it, but I'm also open to accepting it. It's it's a fun theory. It also makes a, a lot of sense. And this is a strength that Fujimoto has. Because he's leaving things so open while also maintaining their complexity, it leaves room for a lot of interpretation. And when you can get your fans to engage with your story in a way that they're thinking about it even after they've read it, so they put in a lot of effort into understanding the story beyond what is shown uh, in the pages, that's when you succeed as a writer. When people can interact within the fandom to find out mysteries that you just implied in the pages. That is how you sell a story well. That is how you keep your fans and you, you, you force them to come back for more. It's, uh, I like that. Fujimoto has really figured it out as a writer. That's how you do it. The more of the mystery and... Um, but also it, it, it needs to be logical, right? It needs to follow a logic, but it's inscrutable. And um, it's complex. And this complexity is leaving a lot of room for interpretation. And when the answers come, it's it's still wowing the readers. So um, that's a skill not many writers have. And it's it's a treat to consume a work like that. And, and, and it's very nice to see that Fujimoto is one of those rare talents. Like he's already talented, we know that. But it's nice to see him be talented in so many different areas when it comes to storytelling. So many different areas. Like, he knows how to market himself, how to draw readers to him and sell a lot. And that's what BTS did with their uh, most beautiful moment in life thing. Th that era, because they told a story in so many different ways, and they just gave you puzzle pieces. So you had to, I don't know, listen to a song, or then look at a music video, look at posters, look at highlight reels, look at trailers, look at diary entries, look at the background, you know, pause at this minute and this second so you can figure something out. And that is when BTS gained popularity. That's when they gained their fandom. They were the underdogs before that, but as soon as they had like a storyline with their music and the story not being told in a chronological order and not being told in a clear manner, like with a straightforward message and uh, of what is going on, but you know, just giving you pieces, that's what keeps that what that's what made them famous. That that's what made them the most popular K-pop group. So many people joined the the frenzy because they wanted to find out what the fuck was going on with that storyline. So many theories. And when people can engage with each other and form a lot of theories and produce their own stuff, like those theories in forms of video essays or, I don't know, blog entries, whatever, and interact within the fandom and keep their name um, trending like that. And that's how you make it. That, I'm convinced that was the key to their success. And I'm convinced that's the key to Fujimoto's success with Chainsaw Man. So I like that. I haven't seen that done in manga that well before. I mean, it worked in Tokyo Ghoul, but I think Chainsaw Man is several steps further and better than that. So. Tokyo Ghoul was already proper, right? But then Fujimoto came and just one-upped it in so many different ways. I don't think it's ever been done like that in manga so far. And that is insane. Like when you can keep the suspense because of the, the really severe things that are happening there. If you have social commentary, if you have philosophical things, if you have emotions, if you have consistency and you have complexity and you have mystery and you have room for interpretation oh boy and you have 
a consistent style, like a, a consistent note to your stories that is the same throughout all the stories you write, and also in Chainsaw Man. And yeah, and you're using the medium to its full potential, like. Uh, Fujimoto, who's doing it in a cinematic way with the paneling and the page turning, the way he draws, right? But also his art style, right? He's like the full package. That is, I haven't seen that combination of all these factors excelling combined into one work before. But we have that with Chainsaw Man. Fujimoto is really so such a rare talent. Like he's excelling in all these different areas that I just mentioned. With one work. It's not across um, some works where these strengths shines and in this work these strengths, uh, strengths shine. It's uh, all the strengths that a good story and how you sell it can have is present in one work. So you get it all in one work. You can learn so much as a writer, if you're uh, an aspiring writer, you can learn so much from Chainsaw Man. The originality of the world building too, I forgot to mention that as one of the strengths, right? And the character designs, the monster designs too. So that is like he is just excelling in all areas of storytelling and manga drawing and selling the work marketing it it's a uh, it's amazing i've never seen it uh, done like this before with all the strength that one medium can have be being present in one work being done by one person alone. Unfathomable. <laughs>